everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Zona. Today I'm going to discuss what is cellulite, the simple science about it, what I think are the inexpensive solutions, if topical cream works, and what's a good diet to observe. Understanding the pathophysiology of cellulite has brought me to come up with some inexpensive solutions. What is cellulite? It's an asymptomatic cottage cheese-like orange peel dimpling disturbing appearance of the skin. It's the uneven extrusion of adipose tissue or fats mostly found in the buttocks, legs, and thighs. Most studies published claims that cellulite may affect up to 80 to 90 percent of post-pubertal women. Even the ones who are in good physical health have them. It's more common in women. It affects more women because our collagen is in parallel arrangement compared to men that have an X pattern, which almost doesn't allow dimpling of the skin. The body's partial connections, called septae, are made of elastin and collagen. Aging naturally produces less and less of these. The aging female body shows less tissue blood supply. It produces less estrogen, which reduces the amount of collagen in the connective tissue fibers. Therefore, the skin presents this uneven cottage cheese appearance. The lack of oxygen or hypoxia in that region of the body could alter the delicate tissue's homeostasis, which ultimately leads to a local fibrotic response and the appearance of collagen strands or septae that connects the subcutaneous fat to the overlying skin which gives rise to these cellulites. The increased amount of water retention due to alteration in extracellular matrix composition may also be a contributing factor. To sum it up, in what seems to be the causes are increase in water fluid retention, decrease in oxygen and collagen in the body, and progressive overaccumulation of bad fats. Fats may have caused the blood vessels to constrict in the affected areas, resulting to decreased ability to deliver oxygen, to spike up inflammation and tissue hypoxia. So how can you be in the 10 to 20% who doesn't have it? Discipline is a must. Having too much fats and not exercising weakens the connective tissue fibers. With aging, which decreases collagen and skin elasticity, even puts you in a higher risk to show this uneven skin texture. Physical exercise and engaging in active lifestyle improves hypoxia and increase blood flow. If you have tried everything else, including targeted exercise and you have a good body mass index, but it's still showing up, you might wanna look closely into your diet. What exactly are you eating? as it also plays an important role. I will discuss here what I eat that I found works for me in dealing with this issue. Also, if you smoke, it affects the lung's ability to deliver oxygen to the body. Your entire body needs good amount of oxygen. Our skin and connective tissue also breathes. And so you might wanna consider quitting as it will also benefit your overall health. Muscle toning and stretchings are also good practices to consider. Stretching promotes elasticity and tissue extensibility. There's so many videos here on YouTube you could learn from on good workout routines. I haven't seen epidemiological data on the exact prevalence and incidence of this condition that's been published. Aging, smoking, poor physical activity, body mass index, and indexes of cardiac risk have been associated, but mostly not backed by strong epidemiological data. There's still a controversy if it can be considered a disease. There's a lack of major evidence-based pathophysiological insights into the nature of this condition. It's also not a popular topic in the medical community. It has a low peer review or research. However, development of treatment is very popular and marketing of products that claim to be effective in its treatment has been taken seriously by developers. With the rise of social media, cosmetic industry has tremendously risen as well to improve the architecture of skin and body. Most treatment indoors are temporary solution and can be very costly. If you can't maintain it, the cellulite shows up again and again. 
This is due to the lack of rigorous scientific methodology behind these products that claims to get rid of these aesthetic issues. Various treatments was introduced, i.e. topical, surgical, laser, body scrubs, massagers, and other therapies like mesotherapy or intradermal therapy. But effects are short-term. The need to exercise and improve diet are the best choices, which complements your overall health, and it's inexpensive. Now that we have some idea why this is happening, we can therefore look closely on our lifestyle. What's in my diet that I found works for me and that gives me more collagen in my system in the least expensive way? Natural food is what I prefer the most and making it myself at home. Bone broth is one of my favorite. It helps the skin to look young and healthy. It has a strong anti-inflammatory component due to its amino acid content. It decreases wrinkles. It's composed of calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, and potassium, which are important minerals that the body needs. It has collagen that improves bone density, skin hydration, and elasticity. It improves lean muscle mass. Its gelatin is made up of glycine and collagen plus amino acid. Proline works together to combat and reduce cellulite appearance. It also improves hair and nail growth. It's actually considered as one of the healthiest and nutritious broth. I add in vegetables and sometimes I just drink it by itself. I've been making them for a while now. I've chosen to follow the Korean way of making bone broth. I think they have the best way of making them in Korea. In Korea, bones are very expensive. Koreans actually love that it's cheaper to buy here in America. They love making this bone broth and I have learned to make it myself the Korean style. Bone broth are mostly the only thing that I would never be out of in my freezer and most of the time it's the only thing in my freezer. I like going grocery shopping and prefer fresh foods for the most part because I do eat out quite a bit so at least I can have a good balance. Recently Whole Foods have been selling organic beef bones which makes me so happy. A low salt diet is also good because salt tends to retain fluids and high content is possible for cellulites to pop up. And it's also detrimental to the health of our heart. The need to improve potassium level is important because potassium is an essential nutrient that helps regulate fluid balance. It may help reduce water retention and improve muscle contractions. It metabolizes carbohydrates. They lessen the possibility of dangerous changes in glucose and hormone levels. Excessive water consumption may lead to depletion of potassium. That's why I only drink enough to quench my thirst. I do not like to overdrink. It might also cause too much urination. When you drink lots of water at once, you tend to urinate frequently. Decrease in potassium could lead to muscle weakness, muscle damage, and spasms, may cause symptoms like leg pain, irritation, and even chest pain. Avocados and bananas have good amount of potassium and known to be the best source, but how many can you really eat in a day? The average banana weighing 125 grams contains 450 milligrams of potassium. It would take at least 7.5 bananas to reach the recommended level per day. I don't eat the same thing in increased amount repeatedly because that's not a balanced diet. Coffee is also considered as high in potassium and could raise your potassium levels with 3 to 4 cups of coffee a day. But I don't think it's a good idea to drink that much and most of us can't even drink more than 1 cup. I like goat milk. It has higher potassium content than cow's milk. I drink both but I drink more goat milk. Other good sources of potassium are oranges, cantaloupe, cucumbers, honeydew, apricots, grapefruit, raisins, dates, cooked spinach, cooked broccoli, baked potatoes with skin, sweet potatoes, mushroom, peas, prunes, and prune juice, tomato juice and tomatoes, almonds, sunflower seeds, spinach, and artichokes. Meat, fish, and chicken, are also high in potassium. So start now, manage your lifestyle and improve your health to avoid this unappealing dimpling in your skin. I hope you learned something today. If you know friends and family who could benefit on this topic, please do share this to them. Please support my channel, like and subscribe. 
Thank you so much for your time spent watching. Please stay tuned for my next topic and check out my other videos as well. You take care always and stay happy and healthy. Mm -hmm.